We're in far north Queensland in Australia with scorpion and spider hunter Stuart Douglas, who milks their venom and supplies it for scientific study. These are Australian tarantulas. They actually vocalise. They make a noise as part of their defence mechanism. And no other tarantulas do that. It's just the Australian Just ones. the Australian tarantulas do that. And they are also the Australian world's most savage tarantula. There are around 300 species of tarantulas in the world. The largest can have a leg span of up to 12 inches, with fangs an inch long. The female can live up to 30 years, while the male can only manage around seven years. Some of these carnivores live in trees, others on the ground. But these Australian tarantulas like to live in burrows. Can her eyes see us? Can... Uh, they've actually got very little sight. But um, they've all the hairs off their back legs and all around their body um, basically senses movement and vibration. Yeah. Stuart is confident that the Australian tarantula venom will find its way into modern drugs, just as other tarantula venoms have. There's already a precedence in other parts of the world where uh, they're already making drugs from tarantula venoms. As such as uh, heart palpitation drugs, heart arrhythmia drugs, and a drug that uh, slows down the effects of when you actually have a heart attack. Many of these amazing creatures are becoming harder and harder to find on the ground due to an illegal black market pet trade. But Stuart has agreed to take us to a secret location where he says he knows wild tarantulas thrive. You know, before they actually get there. Habitat. See, this is a, like a savanna type. Are in this area. I know there have been so Species. many that have been undescribed. Um, yeah. Completely different types of tarantulas here than you do in the rainforest. Yes, yeah, sort of country. Well, there's a huge amount. Yeah, these paints are good. Oh. What's the biggest threat to these animals at the moment in the wild? Uh, definitely human intervention. But the biggest problem would be uh, land clearance, like most animals, and the pet trade. So as far as the black market go, do a lot of the tarantulas go overseas? Yes. Unfortunately, and I'm pretty disheartened to say that, but uh, there's people in Australia that are exporting these animals illegally because there is a lot of money overseas in uh, basically rare Australian tarantulas. So once you've captured a female like this one, then what do you do with her? Uh, predominantly use her for captive breeding as well as uh, venom extraction. How do you actually go about extracting the venom? Can you show us? Yeah, for sure. I've got a spot back up here and we can do a field extraction for the venom. So I'm just going to... Anesthetise the little spider here. And what gas is that? Uh, it's just carbon dioxide. And basically, this is the most efficient way to anesthetise them. So I think that's about enough. And if you just turn that off, yeah, there's the full and nice anesthetised spider. Let me put that. Pop so the, you pop the fangs over the vial, position it, and then just give it a mild shock. So by giving it a mild electric shock that stimulates the venom glands? Yes. Looks very fiddly. It is. Oh there you go. Can you see that? Yep. And that's the gillis tarantula venom. As you can see there's two drops of venom there and that'll be used for biopharmaceutical screening. So is that an average amount of venom that this spider would use to inject its prey? Yeah, I think that's about the amount that they inject to a prey on. See the fangs here? These fangs are as big as most Australian land snake on average. And you've been bitten by one of these guys before, haven't you? Yeah, unfortunately it's a lot bigger. This is a really small one. That's got to hurt. It does. It's about eight hours or ten hours of uh, nausea, vomiting. <laughs> 